Hello everyone and welcome to the Cyclocross World Cup here in Dendermonde, de Belgium. The Dender Monster as we knew it from last year. Before we dive in, I want to let you all know that this course pre-ride is brought to you by Whoop. Whoop is a personalized fitness, health and recovery tool that I've been using this season. It measures biometrics, your daily strain, rates of recovery and much more to help you form healthier habits around your training, your work or in life overall. To get in the green, you can go to whoop.com and use the code in the red to save on your first Whoop purchase. Check out that link in the notes below this video. We're coming down the long start straight now, so let's get into it. If you remember watching this race last year, you're gonna notice some similarities to the course this year. It's another big, heavy tractor pull diesel course again. There are, again, no spectators allowed, which is a major bummer, and it's raining, and it's muddy. But they changed a couple directions on the course. They added some new features, some more run-ups with stairs, some off-cambers, a sand pit, some really cool features. Already shortly into the start, we're into this run-up here on the steep side of the hill. It gets really heavy as the race goes on, and you'll just see just how taxing this course is. Normally, I try to do about three laps of pre-ride, but with how heavy this course is, and you just knew that it was going to continue to deteriorate throughout the entire race, I only did two laps of pre-ride. I was out on a couple different tire pressures. I started off high with a 18, 19 PSI, brought it down as far as 16, 17 PSI. But one difference this year was that compared to last year, we had Storm Bella rolling in. We had a lot of precipitation. It just made the ground really spongy. This year, we're dealing with some frozen ground earlier in the week, a few days earlier. It wasn't as much precipitation, but it's still a really heavy track, but the ruts are a little bit more firm. So we don't need that soft of a tire to get as much traction patch as possible. So I, I ended up going out on Challenge Limus tires, 17, 18 PSI, not the lowest I've ever gone out, but enough to get the traction and still hold on to, uh, to, to hold its shape while we're going into these ruts because some of these transitions were dropping in. And you're gonna notice that there's a lot of running on this course. In pre-ride, the course hadn't deteriorated as much as it will later in the race after the under 23s and the elite women race, but I'm trying to ride this section here. This was all running. In fact, throughout the entire lap, there was a, at least a minute and a half of running, maybe earlier in the race when everyone's fresh. I was able to track about a minute 45 to almost two minutes of running per lap towards the end of the race. So this course really shows who's done their homework. You can really be a technically proficient rider, be light and explosive, but this is the part of cyclocross. It's a winter sport. When the conditions are at their worst, it's muddy, it's heavy, it's a tractor pull, and it requires a really stable, well-rounded athlete. So already having to muscle bike through some of these ruts, muddy sections, up and over this flyover section. There's a nice little feature here. We're dropping down. I'm trying to ride some of these turns that this is one of those turns that if you watch Wout and Mathieu at the front of the race, they're able to ride all the way around to the outside. Most everyone else is running that turn because that was the fastest way to get around it and maintain your momentum. Remounting here towards the end of the race too, or the second half of the race, I ended up pitting just about every half lap. Especially this first pit coming in, the race or the race line that I'm riding right now seemed just a little slower I'm than good. the pit lane. So you know, I'm giving my mechanic Mike Barry a thumbs up right now, just saying I'm good with the pressure I'm on right now and I'm gonna continue going around and I'll see him the next half lap. But I started off the race every lap pitting and then the pit crews got increasingly busier as I started pitting every half lap. We had some of these slabs thrown down on the course to make the, the course crossings a little bit more bearable, bending to the right here on these slabs again. And you're able to get some firm ground, get a little bit momentum and we're coming up over these whoops. This is one of the sections that it was rideable right now but it just deteriorated over the course of the race and you wanted to be as consistent as possible. So bending to the right here, some of these ruts just got so deep and it's very unpredictable what's under the mud, what's under that surface. So you really, it was kind of a guessing game and if you felt as though that rut was getting a little too deep, you just had to keep pushing that circumference just a little bit further outside, a little bit further outside over the slabs, able to get momentum into this hill you don't want to be spinning too low of a gear here because then you're going to lose your traction patch. Then making it up the hill and ooh. Yeah, I, I, in the pre-ride there, I just whacked my hand right on that post. It's And that, that one hurt, I'm not going to lie. But 
shake it off, keep it moving, keep the muscles warm. Um, and it gave me an opportunity to sit up and you'll see the wheel I'm about to hop on right now. King of Cyclocross right there, Wout Van Aert. So not a lot of uh, faster wheels you want to be following than him. Dropping down, this is a new feature into the sand pit. On a very taxing course like this, you want to come into a feature like the sand, very composed. And you want to let the bike kind of choose where it wants to go. You don't want to force the direction of it too much. You don't want to rush to put down the power. No brakes. Try to keep the momentum. Try to find a good rut to slingshot yourself around this. a lot of these corners. I always kind of try to joke around, make a dad joke that you don't need your brakes. Brakes only slow you down. But on a course like this, it is very true where there's going to be so much resistance. The mud is so deep that there's really not a lot of reason for you to use your brakes. Just trust that the course is wide enough for you. And even if you're sliding, there will be a rut for you at the end of the corner. So just trying to put yourself in a good mental place to be able to push your limits technically. Bending to the right out of that, those tracks are a little bit more hard packed. Onto this slick off camber here. While it's just ahead here, I'm trying a new line. Going all the way to the outside. Yeah. How to put a quick foot down to readjust the bike. But if you come into this little bit of an off camber section, you're able to muscle the bike. And again, it all depends on your cadence and your ability to maintain that traction because the tire pressure is so low and we're running such a heavy tire. Again, that challenge Limus, it, it, that really is that you get the most bite out of that. It's that's the track, most tractor like tire that you're going to have. So try to mean, get the momentum back when you can and just go wide as much as you can to maintain that traction. Coming off the side of there, the hill there, back onto the, the tire tracks here. Able to get some speed back. Longer straightaways. These are the sections that are really good for TV, but it's also real sustained power. And of course, like this, you're not putting out massive watts. You're not doing these big 13, 14, 1500 watt sprints, but your overall power is very consistent because it's just that diesel track to pull course. Again, Wout comes by here. We're on these slabs. Get a little bit of free speed coming into this big muddy heavy pedaling section here ruts are being formed some of them are shooting you in different directions and again that's kind of why you wanted a tire pressure that wasn't totally low because the ruts were a little bit firm barriers here such a slow approach and so muddy that there wasn't really an opportunity to bunny hop there look at Wout's lines here though he's going outside outside inside or some of these corners and it's just it's the creativity that you really want to look for in a course like this it's a really challenging course to kind of maintain that momentum, but also always be in a good mental space where you're always looking for creative lines. Again, look for that green traction patch. Green means grip, green means go. And he's able to be very creative with that. Kind of arcing his corners really well where I tried to stay a little bit straighter. But if you cover a little bit more distance and go wider to the outside and get that green traction patch, you're able to gain more speed and traction with the tire. So that's why he's going for those wider lines. He's not looking to waste energy or time or space. He's getting free momentum with that. So again, another staircase section here. Maybe you came in with enough momentum to go two stairs at a time, but at the end of the race, or it's certainly you're only going one stair at a time because it's such a running heavy lap. And again, just under two minutes of running for this race. This is a little tricky section here. You'll see Walt makes a quick little slip. I'm in that rut, but maybe a lap or two later, that rut was so deep that it caught the front wheel and actually in the race I ended up, I didn't crash, I was able to catch myself, but my bike got stuck in the rut. And that just goes to show you just how deep this mud is and how often the course is changing. So I'm going into the pits here. Team USA had boxes 10 and 11, so earlier in pit two, later on in pit one, which meant we kind of had to run a little bit after getting the bikes. Sometimes the mechanics will put the bikes in the air, so we have to catch them on our shoulders and just run for a little bit longer. Wout's swinging into his pit crew right now to adjust his tire pressure. After this lap, I'm good to go with the pre-ride, so I'm gonna head back to the camper. But this is the last feature that we had to deal with where you really had to muscle the bike, that leg zapping feature. We're coming into this bridge. It's not a big bridge. It's not really challenging alone, but with how late the lap it is, how heavy the mud is, and the, how slow of an approach we have, we're really muscling the bike up and over. And there were riders that decided to run that bridge just to maintain that speed. So really, uh, it, it showed, this course showed who did their homework. 
who did the running, who did the strength and conditioning, the stability work, the power work, the low cadence, the, sh the threshold training, all these different zones and things that we train as cyclists and as cyclocross athletes, this course showed who did the work and who didn't. So it was a great course. I really enjoyed it. That's all we have for today. Thanks for watching. Really appreciate it. And we'll catch you at the next race.